All right. Hello, everyone. Hello, Tamir. Hey, man. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Hi, Tamir, and hi, everyone who joined us today for our Games Round live show. This is a series of events, as you know, uh, which we're running with uh, publishers who are certified on our platform. Uh, and uh, today we invited Tamir, uh, publishing manager from, from Mooney. And we're going to talk about the value of simple lifetime value for game developers, accessible methods of understanding how user behavior impacts the value. Right, Tamir? Yeah. Everything is indeed. correct? Yeah. Cool. Cool. Uh, let me introduce you, Tamir, um, uh, before I handing the mic. Um, Tamir is publishing manager at Mooney uh, in Israel. With more than four years of experience, and correct me if I'm wrong here, Tamir, in mobile marketing uh, and business analysis, uh, he has a record of finding new revenue streams and integrated marketing strategies. Uh, Tamir has extensive experience uh, servicing leading companies and top tier agencies across the globe and pro proven success in business development. Um, Tamir uh, is leading the publishing team at Mooney. Uh, he brings a demonstrated history in creating, crea creating creative and sustainable ways to maximize the lifetime value. Uh, of players. He's based in Tel Aviv. I uh, love, love surfing, football, uh, and long sessions of console playing. Uh, everything is correct? Yeah, basically. Uh, awesome. And uh, let me introduce myself. This is Andy from Games Round. Um, um, so I created it with a bunch of other folks. We're based in California. Um, uh, so United States. So it's eight two a.m. in the morning, and I guess Tamir, your time is something around five five p.m. Six six p.m. Okay, got it. Yeah. So it's five p.m. It's it's European time. Yeah. So a um, couple of words about Games Round, guys. Games Round is a platform which helps game developers, five publishers. This is a launch pad for for games and for games de developers. We have already more than 70 publishers who are certified on the platform. What this certification means, we, we have an, a call with every single publisher um, so that we understand that this is a person who is specifically responsible for um, scouting a game and for looking for new games. So we got people like Tamir on our platform who are looking for new games. And uh, if you get there on the platform, if you put your game on the platform, they will be notified right away because publishers say fillers. For example, mobile, hyper casual, later stage game with the team from Europe or and South America, or like, like any different kinds of fillers are possible uh, on Games Round, and publishers are notified right away. And if they like what they see, they click con they click connect, and they uh, go ahead and contact the studio. And you will not believe how many contacts we see on the platform uh, when when there's a good game and this good game and good team and everything is well designed on 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 Games Round. So if you spend a little bit of time in designing your profile. Uh, I'm pretty sure that you will have connections. So enough from our side. This session is uh, dedicated to Tamir and to Mooney. Um, and um, and uh, I will hand you the mic. So please take it from here. All right. Cool. Um, so first of all, uh, thanks, Andy. Thanks for having me here and giving us the opportunity. Um, just a quick note about Games Round. Me, myself, as a publishing manager, while I'm scouting, um, new games, new developers. It's a it's a pretty much one stop shop for me using Games On because I have the opportunity to first watch the game prehand and to have the ability to contact with the with the developer, uh, which saved me save me time basically. Um, so yeah, thanks for that. Um, let me start with sharing the presentation. Sounds good. So, thanks everyone. Um, I will start with a short introduction for Mooney and myself. Um, basically, we established Mooney around a year and a half ago. 
we specialize in publishing hyper casual games and you know when looking on the hyper casual industry in general we see a very competitive ecosystem so we needed to come with a different approach so if only we come with uh, being very data driven and very studio oriented and i think that the data driven part i will try and demonstrate here in this presentation you know in all my you know experience in uh, in uh, mobile marketing i come with the term ltv ltv and there's tons of way to calculate ltv there's simple methods there's einstein einstein equation and we really try that the thing that guide us through making this presentation is first of all to make the ltv term very accessible very simple and to give to the developers that are watching this presentation a real action items tips that they can extract and you know apply on their own games so let me start let's start let me start with a good game so a good game is not equal profit and i think that this is the first step in understanding the publishing process you know nowadays we see more and more cases of games rising to the top charts very quick and then falling down quicker than the raise up, the rise up. And, and I think that we also see a lot of cases of games changing from the publisher account to the developer account, the developer account back. And so probably you ask yourself, you know, what makes a good game a profitable one? So what makes a good game profitable one are those factors. I will give you a few seconds to try and read this. As you can see, there's a lot of factors here. And I think that, you know, when we build, build this presentation, this slide, we try to emphasize this part because there's a lot of element, a lot of factors that, you know, impact on your, on your game uh, profitability. And it's very complicated to understand and it's build a lot of frustration within the developers. And this frustration, we understand it, but I think that after this slide, you will understand, the, after this presentation, you will understand the process better and the complexity won't be complex anymore. Um, so let's move on and break it down. So besides CPI, there are two vital elements that will determine if your games will be profitable or not. Let's set the tails for each one here. And then in the next slides, I will dive more thoroughly in each term. Let's start with the ARPDAO. ARPDAO is basically how much money you received for an average user who played the app on a specific day. Retention is how many of you already know. It's how many users continue playing the app after they initially downloaded it. So day after they initially downloaded it and so on. DLTV, the reason that we all hear is how much money in total you received from an average user in a specific time period. So for example, an LTV of one week, this is the specific time period. What was the, how much money we receive in total from an average user in a specific time period of one week? We will use the combination of ARPDAO and LTV, uh, ARPDAO and retention to understand the LTV. And now let's break it down. Let's start with the ARPDAO. So ARPDAO, average revenue per daily active users. Let's look on the three main elements that affect our income per daily active users, the ARPDAO. From the left, you can see the IAP, left uh, top, the IAP, in a purchases. In a purchases, we see a lot of more, a lot of you know more and more cases that IAP takes a big cut from the LTV. Depends, of course, on the app. Depends on the genre, but it could take between fifteen percent and higher. And and in this presentation, I will ignore the IAP when we calculate the LTV, but just know that 
it's, it can be a huge factor. Uh, moving on to the eCPM. Effective CPM. What is it, an effective eCPM? Basically, cost per meal, how much people will pay to show their ads in our ad placement 1,000 times. Our ad placements, as many of you know, are rewarded videos banners and interstitial. So how many other partners will pay us for every 1,000 impression in our, our ad placement? Why we call it eCPM? The reason is that we are getting paid by different types of advertisement model. The common one is CPI, cost per install, or CPM, cost per impression. Uh, so to unify them, we use the term eCPM. The simple Example would be that if someone paid paid us a CPI of one dollar, and this install occurred for one thousand impression, so I split the one install by one thousand impression, and then we have an eCPM of one dollar. Um, there are lots of factors that impact the eCPM. A lot. I will focus on true two main factors, two major factors, in my opinion, um, the most crucial ones that impact the ECPM. The first one is the market demand. The money that we will get from our three ad placements, the rewarded video, interstitial, and banners, depend on the market demand. Depend how much our app is trendy, how much the genre that our game sit on, is relatively to other top apps. Is it related to their genres as well? The why targeting is, is the game that we use, it's a niche game or I can have a why targeting. All those factors of the market demands impact the, the eCPM. And, and not only, only that, also we have a term that it's a bit complicated but it's named waterfalls. And, and I think that the best way to, to explain waterfalls is to imagine a pyramid. While imagining the pyramid in the top of the pyramid, the narrowest part of the pyramid, we are putting partners that are willing to pay us more for those 1,000 impressions. So for example, I will put one partner at the top that I know that he's willing to pay more than other partners. And at the bottom of the pyramid, I will put partners that I know that are willing to pay less. That's, that's in my opinion, the best way to, to understand the waterfall. And the reason that waterfalls can impact your eCPM is because during the optimization process, as a publisher, you want to maximize the pyramid in a way that will take your partners to the limit, that will make them to pay as many as they can for your ad placements. So this is why waterfalls are so crucial when it comes to the eCPM. Uh, moving forward, uh, let's look on the number of ads. There's a negative correlation between the eCPM and number of ads, and the negative correlation is pretty much logically because understand that me, as a partner for one of Mooney's game, I'm willing to pay more to get the first ad, to get the, the first 1,000 impression, and I will get, I will want to pay less for the 100 ad. So if I want to be at the top and to get the, the first ad, I will pay more and so, so on. This is the negative correlation, which is pretty, pretty much, uh, um, speak for itself, number of ads. Crucial point here is that the number of ads is how much, how many ads I'm managing to show to the, to the user. Since in hypercasual, the main monetization mechanism, it's showing the user ads, and I want to give him the option to see as many ads as he can. And, and two factors in the number of ads that I want to, to focus on in terms to understand the number of ads is playtime. Playtime, it's session time 
multiplied by the number of daily sessions. And this is the real foundation for monetization of your app. For example, you know, us as a publishing, this factor is something that we really are focusing on in our testing period. Playtime could give to can be a huge factor when it comes to the real profitability of your app. And not only playtime, but there, there's also engagement. The engagement part is I don't I not only want that the user will watch the app, the ad, I want him to be engaged with the app. And in order to make him engaged in the app, I want it to be as natural as I can. And this is the first tip that I promised I will give you. The first tip will be to make level length between 20 and 30 seconds, because between like in this time period, I'm able to present ads in a more natural way, which increase the engagement of the user in, with the ads. And for example, if I will make a, a level length of one minute, sometimes I will need to present an ad in the middle of the, of the level. In, in the middle of the user playing the level. And, and, and it obviously will affect the, the engagement here. Um, moving on, let's see the right side of the presentation. We see the basically um, an example. The numbers here are not real. The numbers here are only uh, for us to be able to, to make it much more uh, simple. And so, Let's start with the top, the rewarded video. So let's assume that we'll get $30 eCPM, hence $30 split by 1,000, we get three cents per ad, which means that if a user see one ad, one rewarded video, I will get $3. And moving on, all right, this is the, we have interstitial and then we have banner and let's assume that the, the user watched four uh, RVs, two interstitial and ten banners. If we sum it up we get a daily an, an, an average revenue per daily active user of 17 cents. By understanding this you can really understand the impact of the number of feds because the next tip will be to monitor the playtime and the number of ads of your users. This will be really controlling the revenue in your app and not just a share luck of, wow, I made a game and it's like super profitable. I don't know how it happened, but by really controlling it and monitoring it, you can increase your revenues and make your game profitable. A lot of people ask me, all right, so how can I do it? How can I monitor it if I'm not like a big publisher and I don't have all the data tools? So a lot of us using game analytics, game, game analytics have their new ad tool that can help you monitor it. Um, so I, I really suggest you guys by simple events, understand it and control it. Um, moving on, I will go to the next uh, part of the understanding the LTV, which be retention. Retention rate. All right. And you, looking on this slide, I want you to understand that we are looking on a specific 10 users that for our example, download the, the app today, okay? And the retention here is round numbers. I wish they were real numbers, but they're only uh, round numbers so I can present the example easily. So we are focusing on the journey of 10 users that downloaded the app today. Today is day zero, so we have 100% retention rate, which is 10 daily active users. Day one, which is tomorrow, we have 70% 70, 70%, which uh, equal to seven daily active users and so on, okay? By summing all the daily active users, we get 38 daily active users. So by sum all those, I can get a 38 daily active user, which means that for every 10 users that downloaded the, the app on day zero, I will get 38 daily active users. And in order to understand the power of retention, 
it leads me to the next slide, which is this one. First row, out out. Okay, those numbers are not real numbers. Again, the out out uh, is only an example. And as you can see, the out out is decreasing by day to day. And the only reason, again, logically, today, if I'm downloading the app, it's only natural that today I will play more and will engage more in the app than tomorrow and the day after tomorrow. So obviously, the out out is decreasing uh, on a day day to day, but you need to understand that this example, we, we're isolating one user in a specific day because there are lots of users that comes, we are continue buying users. So there's a new user that coming tomorrow and day after tomorrow. So at the end of the day, the, the numbers of the out out are balancing, but now I'm focusing on one specific user. So th this is why his out out is decreasing. And in the dream scenario, let's say that this user never left the app for seven days. So we have 100% constant retention in this week. So we have constant 100% in day zero up to day seven. So I can assume that by combining and summing up all the up down, I can get the LTV. If I will sum 17, 14, 12, 10, 9, 8, 6, and 1, I can get the up down. However, it's not the dream and it's the real life. And if you look on the last row, the good real life, by the way, those numbers are real retention numbers from the game square bell, all right? Um, so when we, we know that retention also come into play and we know that there's a, you know, there's a churn rate every day. So by multiplying the out down of each day with this retention, each day will get the LTV. So 17 cent multiply by 100% of day zero plus 14 cents multiply by 50% day one and so on sums it up. We are getting the LTV of 48 cents on a weekly on a weekly period. So the LTV of this week will be 48%. This is really shows you the the you know the power of LTV. And moving on to the next slide. So in this slide, this is the first time I will mention CPI. So far, we only talk about income, about outdoor and retention. Now I will talk a bit about CPI, about the cost side as well, in order to understand test versus scale. Okay, let's start with the test. And again, this slide, I think, will pretty much close uh, every, you know, tie loose uh, that you have about the process and will give you a much more, you know, cl clarifying understanding of the process. And I think that at the end of this slide, uh, the frustration level, I hope, uh, will pretty much balance. So test is only a prediction, okay? In this prediction, when, when we're testing, we can only predict three main factors, which is the CPI, the retention, and the playtime, right? And, and when testing, we use Facebook. A lot of developers ask me why we are using Facebook. Nowadays, Facebook gives us the best solution, um, the best proxy, the first results, all right? the correlation between results. So pretty much there's a correlation in the in testing with Facebooks. And the easy integration, there's the Facebook SDK. Specifically at Mooney, we also use a, use a Just um, because a Just can pull more data, which is it enriches um, our data tools. We use a, a lot of data tools in our testing. And, and it really enriches it and can give us a, a better understanding from the, the beginning. And we always trying new platforms. We always open our eyes. So far, Facebook algorithm is the best, but who knows? It's a, it's a high pace industry. So test is only a prediction. When we look on the timeline, so we have the testing period, which we understand the CPI, retention, and playtime. And then come the soft launch. The soft launch is where we're adding monetization. With the monetization, we see 
a lot of time it hurts the retention and it's only natural. But we also see if the CPI stay constant. And we have the honeymoon period, which is between two weeks to a month when the CPI is constant and we can really, you know, put the pedal on and, and exploit this, this, the, low, the low CPI. But then you want to have a, a platform and to use more platform that, you know, can give you a, a more stability, uh, like Ironso, Saplavin, a lot of platforms that we are buying with. And when you come to those platforms, the CPI is always rising up. And the reason the CPI, you know, is rising up, it's going against our logic, this time against our logic. Because when we are assuming that we are buying more, when we are buying more and more user, we should get them in a low price. It's like going to, to, to the bazaar and go to the tomato uh, shop owner and tell him how much it will cost me one tomato. He will tell you one dollar and then you come and ask him, okay, so how much 1,000 tomatoes? Here, it's not that way because the demand for quality users for, for, a, long, for a, a lot of users is strong and stiff and the supply is getting lower and lower. Uh, of course, it's changes between sources and platforms and countries and devices and so on. But, you know, we always want to get more and more users and the supply is getting lower and lower. So the CPIs are, are naturally going up. And, and I think that those cases between soft launch to scale, this is where we see the cases that I talk about in my second slide about apps that are going up very fast, which means that they had in the soft launch a very low CPI, but when they start scaling, the CPI went very high and they didn't manage to exploit the honeymoon period, and then they dropped down in the charts or going back to the developer account after they transfer it to the publisher account. And it's natural because as I said at the beginning, test is only a prediction. Um, this basically, I think, covers pretty much everything about LTV. There's another slide that I didn't put in, in our equation, but I think it's, you know, it's really nice to understand it, uh, and it will give you some added value, which is the K-factor. When talking about K-factor, basically, it's how many organic users I will get for each acquired user that I have. So let's imagine that in my game, I have four users, three of them came for my Facebook campaign and one came organically. So 75% are for my Facebook campaign acquired, 25% are organic. And, you know, it doesn't mean that I have another K factor of 25%. It means that I have 33% K factor because for every three acquired user, I have one user that it came organically. So in simple, in simple word, install, each install that came from my user acquisition campaign will give me 33% of the organic user. So 33% from the LTV of organic user. Um, also, we need to take into account um, that most of the cases, most of the cases, not all cases, Paid users are more quality and engaged. Remember engaged? So they are more quality and engaged than organic users. And the reason is because when you're buying a user, when you do a user acquisition and you get a user throughout ad campaigns, in Facebook, TikTok, Snapchat, no matter where, those users probably playing another games, all right? And they are more engaged in the games so they are players, let's call it like they are hyper casual player. So probably they will be more quality users and not just random users that like what, try to find a game in the app store and it showed up and they downloaded it. Um, so the equation here will be that the LTV of our acquired user plus K factor multiplied by the LTV of the organic users. Um, I know it sounds complicated afterwards, 
Uh, Andy will share the, the I, ha, I sent him the, the presentation, he could share it, and you are more than willing to send me emails to really understand the, this part if uh, you, you lost me with the, the equations. Um, there are lots of, you know, things as a, as a publisher that we can do to increase the K factor from ASO, all right? Uh, a lots of cases we see that there's a misattribution using um, MMPs like AppsFlare or Adjust, and that they, you know, think that a paid user is an organic and otherwise. And we see a lot of cases of influencers. For example, Among Us. Among Us is a game super viral right now, but it, it was released two years ago. So we see that influencers or, or vegan run um, became like in top charts only because of influencers. So influencers, it's also a way to, to understand um, the organic way. So far, so good. Uh, I finished the LTV presentation. Uh, now I will give you a, a quick a brief about Squarebird just to, to really understand the, the way that we applied our equation here. So Squarebird was tested by leading publishers uh, for almost year and a half. When we got published, when we got Squarebird to our hands, we applied our tools. We managed to reduce the CPI, and and by predicting LTV with our tools nowadays, we can predict LTV in a very high accuracy. We managed to bring the game to be in the top 50 for more than six months, which is a lot of time nowadays to be in the top charts with more than 80 million downloads. Um, so yeah. Uh, that's basically about it. Uh, I will stop sharing my uh, presentation right now, and uh, let's bring up Andy again. Uh, I can't hear you, Andy. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you so much for uh, for this amazing presentation. This is very valuable and insightful. Uh, and I've got a couple of questions here. Uh, yeah, sure. So um the first one is which tool do you use to uh to to measure arbdao so basically um while, while using adjust and all of our tools we are pulling uh with an uh, with an api data from all the sources that we are working with and we are really breaking down each source each users applying our more complicated equations in order to automatically predict the ARPTAL, which help us with understanding the LTV and help us to be much more aggressive when we are buying user. Because once you know your LTV, if you know that, let's assume that your LTV will be 50 cents, you can place a higher bid in, as your CPI and can be much more aggressive than other partners when buying users. Yeah, the, the reason well, I think that the, the, this question popped up is that can a small studio without big analytics team measure that on their own? Definitely, definitely. And I think that by reviewing again the, the presentation that I gave you while understanding the retention, so let's say that we know the retention of the, the, the basically the app, we know that what is the retention of the game. And if you are doing your own acquisition and running by yourself, so you know how much money, how, what is the outdown for each day, by knowing those two factors, you can basically know your LTV. Not accurate as other tools or our tools because we use much more complicated, but you can have a you know pretty much a good understanding of the LTV. Everyone can apply this. Okay. Uh, another question is um, so well, I'm reading that uh, is uh, at which point shall a game go to a publisher with the, what kind of uh, LTV parameters? Um, so basically, they mean is that well, whether they should wait for a certain LTV to reach uh, during their test stage or uh, or they should go to a publisher like earlier all right so this question is a tricky one because it's really in in my opinion it's best to go to the publisher from the get-go because every publisher all of them are good and we have for example in our 
publishing team, we have dedicated publishing manager and game designer for every studio. So let's assume that now a, a studio come to me with a game that have a good LTV. In my opinion, if you would came earlier working with our game designers, I think we could achieve better LTV in the same time period. But as long, at the end of the day, if we have good play time, good retention, and good CPI, go to the publisher. Don't start and promote your app because sometimes you're wearing off the CPI and you can miss the honeymoon period because this timeline is not that long. No, it's not, we are not publishing uh, AAA games. It's not Witcher 3. It's, uh, it, the, the timeline is much more shorter than, than they imagine. So if you have those three metrics, playtime, retention, and CPI, go to the publisher, they can help you. Okay, it seems that without a good analytics and advertising team, it's not even worth uh, getting into this business. So it's not a magic then you release a game and it gets uh, downloads right away. So the, the magic is happening after you develop a game, right? Uh, listen, if there's a good game and the metrics are strong, the game will be profitable. Right. Not always. In most cases. I showed in which cases not. But I think that by applying analytical tools, by really understanding the process, by being engaged with a very strong BI tools, you can maximize the potential of the game. So I think that using all those complicated analytical tools, we take your game to the next level. Even if it's good, it can be always better. New markets, new opportunities, um, you know, and so on. Okay, got it, cool. Um, a couple of questions from Dory here. Um, uh, what will be the new trends in 2021? I know it's right. a big so, question. But, yeah, yeah, it's a it's a big question, but but I, I will focus on on this question, and I, I'll give a few examples as well. It's a good question, though. In hyper casual, it's really hard to predict a trend. Trends changing super fast; they are coming back, go away. But at the end of the day, to to 2021 will be a very challenging one. We will see games that are combining two mechanics. Uh, we will see, for an example, uh, games that are using one mechanic that we know that gives them a low CPI and another mechanic that gives them retention and they com combine it. Um, there's a lots of cases. Um, we will see games that are bringing, like hybrid games, they are pulling some mechanism from other genres, from casual games and making them simple and simple and more suited to the hyper casual which will give them because the pool of users hyper casual users are, it's very broad it's not like a very niche one like match three games candy crush it's more broader so they will pull mechanism from the casual games into hyper casual they make it simple clean nice and then they could exploit the, the wide pool of users and, and enjoy it. Knock em all, for example, by Voodoo, first person shooter that we see is, you know, they took first person shooter into hyper casual and, uh, or say games where, you know, they have a few games uh, that are feeling a bit casual, but hyper casual and so on. So Got combining it. two mechanism and being innovative with uh, pulling some new genres towards hyper casual. Cool. Thank you. Uh, when you're looking for games or teams, uh, so are you looking for games or teams to order games with your own brief? So basically, the question is: when you go when, when you're going there out on on games round or a, a other place, are you looking for a good game, uh, and you want to develop further this game with a with a team, or you're looking for a great team and you have your own ideas you want to deliver de develop with this specific team? This question I can answer only uh, by presenting our agenda at Mooney. So it will be very specific to Mooney here. You know, there's a lots of places that you see dashboards nowadays that you upload your game to the dashboard. If uh, the good, if it's a present good result, then someone will contact you and then all the start the relationship with the developer itself. 
we have the ability to do that in Mooney also, but we prefer to have the personal touch. We understand that in this industry, you need to have something that will differentiate you from other competitors, for example. So firstly, I will, and every time I'm talking with a new studio, the first question is, tell me a bit about yourself. Let me understand the people that I'm handling with, that they're going to be my partners. Nowadays, it's very hard to find a hit in hyper casual, and I want studios that I have good relation with, and I can run a marathon with. It's not a sprint, it's a, it's a long term. And, and this is like, so even if the game is not that good, but the studio that I'm, I'm engaging with, it's, it's something that I feel I can work with. I bring in my game designer, make them brainstorm and find a new game. But so I'm, a, I, I'm looking for teams. I'm looking for good teams, uh, friendly teams that understand the process, enjoying the challenge. Um, yeah. Cool. This is a perfect answer on that. Thank you for that, Tamir. Yeah. I guess we can move on to the next part of the of the of the stream today. It's game yeah. reviews, the 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 fun part. Exactly. I think that. Let me share my screen again. Um, one moment. Okay. So the first game will be a game named Front Runners. Um, let me um, give it short play here. Okay, maybe you could, yeah, you, you, you yeah. can maybe make it full screen so that everyone sees it because it's yeah. too small, I think. Definitely. Okay, talking about this game, let's start from the good things. Uh, I always like to start from the good things because in every game there are, you know, things that they can uh, uh, preserve. Art, super nice. Maybe it's relevant and could be more viral because uh, the election in the United States, you know better than me, Andy, you're based in California. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but a, a few notes. Let's start with uh, when I talked about the trends and I, you know, talked about 2021 and casual games. This is a casual game. First of all, it's an endless, all right? Endless in hyper casual are less trendy because the progression kind of, they're not feeling it, you know, too much. And this is a casual game that didn't apply the mechanic for hyper casual. We see the background is very noisy, and um, and when making a game that it's more casual than hyper casual, you leave the wide pool of users, okay? The wide pool of users of hyper casual, and going to a narrower pool of casual players. When you go to next pool, casual players are costing more than hyper casual. The things in hyper casual players that you can find players in very low CPI. Here, the CPI will be very big very high, which means it would be harder to, to make this game profitable. Of course, in terms of uh, UI and so on, there's a lot of improvement, making it simpler and so on. Um, so yeah, that's, that's in my opinion, um, the, the, the crucial points in this game. Um, so yeah, uh, moving on to the next game. Yep. Oh. I guess I need to log in because it's... Uh... Yeah. It's visible only to certified publishers and investors on the platform. Yeah. One sec. Let's see if it remembers me. Yeah, it remembers. Yep. Cool. Let me enlarge it.
Okay. So this game, interesting one. I talked about combining two mechanisms, right? Here we see a combination of two mechanisms, pinball and arcanoid. Pinball, the flip your stop, that flip the ball and the arcanoid one that every um, brick can have power-ups and different stuff. So it's like arcanoid, the classic games. Um, very nice. My main issues here is two hands. Hyper casual, our player that loving to play with one hand and one finger. Here you need to use both fingers, both hands, unless you can work with your two fingers with this game. I don't think it's possible. Um, and in terms of art, 8-bit art, like Tomb of the Mask, it's really niche. And again, it takes us from the wider pool to a narrowest pool. I'm not saying that 8-bit not don't have the chance to work. I, I'm just saying that it's narrowing the chances. Um, so again, 8-bit is a... It's it's a bit of a, a, a taster choice, so I don't know. Um, this is my main, you know, um, let's say feedback. My main notes for this game is lose the two hands. I know it's it's almost impossible when it comes to pinball games, and the eight bit is a matter of of taste. But I love the the you know the innovative thinking of combining pinball and arcanoid. Going to catch the bubble. And I think that you can start um, discussing the game right away, not waiting okay. for it to load. Yep. Okay, sure. So uh, the game, I think that it's a bit slow. Again, we come to a game which is an S game. Okay. Um, as you can see, it starts slow. There is no really feedback for the for the, the, the user. It it's not quite there. Um, again, you know, when it comes to hyper casual, we want it to to be fun. And here, it's uh, lose of progression when it's an endless game. Um, I, for example, if like the the shapes were stuck or making another shape, something that would give the user feedback. However, clean out, clean UI, very nice, um, but it's not that trendy anymore. Um, again, and it's a 2D game. Squareball is a 2D game, but 2D games takes us to a bit narrower pool. So statistically, it could be tougher to, to, to make this game a hit, but it's only a matter of, of chances, you know. Uh, moving on to the next game. And, and it's a match three game. And it takes me back to the first point. Uh, match, three, match three games. Uh, in, hype, in, in casual, uh, in casual uh, um, genre, a niche genre in casual genres, the, the person that plays match three are very expensive and the, the pool is very small. So CPI obviously naturally will be higher, uh, which makes it almost impossible to monetize uh, the way that uh, we monetize when it comes to hyper casual. Um, swipe rush. Swipe rush, it, it's, a, you know, it's a good game. Um, it's a good game. However, in terms of trend, it reminds me catch-up games from 2018. Those days, you know, those kind of games were amazing. Nowadays, it, they kind of are a, a bit out of trend. And with the swerving mechanic, like swapping left and right, it's nice. But somewhere in the, in the way, I'm thinking that there are, there are places to tap, that it's, it can jump. I don't think that it, in terms of trend, it would really success here um, when it comes to 2021. But who knows? Again, it's a matter of, of statistics. In my opinion, we're going to a narrower pool again. Card rush. Amazing game. I want to test this game. Super innovative. Reminds me Mario Kart. Okay, I, I'm a big fan of taking uh, 
um, Nintendo games and making them hyper casual. We see it a lot. Um, it it has a, a they it's need a, to have a a small twist in there to make it more fun, more engaged, like focusing maybe on the turns and make it very satisfying. When I'm seeing this kind of game, first thing I'm like I'm doing, I'm taking my game designer, put him in a call with the developer. They need to work together. This game have a potential, in my opinion. Definitely would love to test it. If the developer is hearing me, reach out. Um, I think that we can take this game and make uh, wonderful things. Um, and let's move on to this game. Push a mayhem. Uh, everyone re know that it's a. Uh, it reminds them push them all by voodoo. Uh, when seeing this game, I have two notes. If you make a game that is similar to other publishers' game or other game that were published and were hit, make a twist. Okay, make it. Take the mechanic, improve it, give it your own taste, something of your own design. Uh, be innovative about it. When it comes to this mechanic, the pushing mechanic, it's a simple mechanic of pushing. But if you make the mechanic of pushing amazing, you put all your effort of the mechanic itself, of making it feel good and look good. All the noise in the background, the snow, the dark colors, you don't need them. You just need a good mechanic that will release dopamine in the user play. And, and and that's it. So here we see a lot of noise in uh, in the background. We see the, the snow is going down. We see uh, the black colors. With black is not really a part of the hyper casual color palette. Uh, more brighter and clean colors. Um, but give it a twist. The mechanic here not look not look very good. Don't look very good. So. Uh, I would focus on making the mechanic better and be innovative when it comes to it. So yeah. And the last game will be um, Muffin Idle Tycoon. All right, so I'm a big fan of idle games. You can see that we have a few idle games in our account as well. Idle Transformation and Idle Streamer. I'm a big fan of Idle Games. Uh, I don't know why. Um, it's just, uh, I think, uh, uh, my own choice, my own taste. Here, we see that the whole point in, in Idle Games is to see the progression. And uh, and I think that here, you, know, you see, like, it sums up with just clicking on the muffin getting points and, and improving, but, but, but we don't see the real progression. A fact, users in Facebook, for example, engaging with the app, for, with the ads for five seconds, okay? So you need to show the user, the potential user, your game in two to three seconds. In two to three sec seconds, the user need to understand from the ad, the game. Here, even if you will have, I think, one minute, you, you, the user don't really understand what the game is about, and the co conversion rate will be very low. So this is all about the progression, and, and I think that this is a point that everyone can go with it. When you have a game, don't give other users to play, it, friends or family or what it is, Give them a short video of five seconds. If they understand the game in five seconds, and they some, this is something that they want to play, this is more accurate test for you guys. Um, so yeah, that's that's basically it about the games. Great. Tamir, I think that we have uh, six minutes left. Maybe we can take some other games from the list, um, uh, which, sure. which, which, which were submitted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Give me one second. Let me open the list and choose something. Yep. OK. 
Okay. Okay, let me share my screen. One second, it takes sure. time to load up. Okay, I'm pulling out all the uh, Excel sheets. I'm yeah, sharing right, right from now. the top. I think we can we can just put take okay. it right from the top of the list because these are yeah. the newest ones. Okay, let's go. Highball flash. Yep. Kind of this, so here my have a few notes only from seeing uh, the game uh, for the first time. First of all, landscape versus portrait. As I mentioned, hyper casual players want to play with one hand. It's pretty hard to play in one hand while the, the phone is upside down and while we're in a, on the landscape mode. So I would really, the first thing would be let's focus on sport games. Um, in terms of uh, uh, 2D, 2D can be a good hit, but you're narrowing down your probabilities to make a hit. So I, I, I really fo will focus on mix 3D. Uh, of course, you know, by examining charts, because this is nowadays this is the benchmark to much understand where the market is going to. Uh, we see that most of the games are 3D, most cases. Um, because in 3D, there's more room for improvement. Um, although it's really messy, um, the game is sad. The game is a bit messy. I'm feeling that, like, I, I don't really understand how playing. You, for example, if you look on Squared, Squared Bird Dead, you can, from the, the two things, understand what you need to do. Here, I'm just seeing a lot of explosive. The ball, I don't really understand. You, like, it takes me time, so I really need to focus and I have only three to five seconds. Remember, I'm I'm the type of user that only watch an ad for five seconds. If it's if I'm not into it in five seconds, so I'm not into it. Tamir, quick question here. Um, uh, for as as a publishing manager, the one who's using who's looking for games, do you look into games without a video? Or without a matrix, so but without a matrix, probably yes. But what about video? Um, so you were asking if we're testing videos? No, no, no. I'm asking if you are reviewing games, and you have a list of games, and uh, there is a game without a video. Do you review it, or you need a, a video to review it? So as I said, if the first of all, let me talk to the team. Even if the team has a video and the video is good, first I want to talk with the team. So let's start with you know talking with each other to understand that we're feeling comfortable working together. And if there's a video or not, it's not a real factor for me as the beginning of the relationship. After understanding the team and meeting the team, then of course video or an, any other way to 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 understand the, the, the quality and execution skills of the studio are, are fine, but... Got it, got yeah. it. I think we are on time right now. Any last, um, any last advices to, to, to teams who are, who are watching us now and who will watch this video in recording? What's your so, yeah, suggestions? And uh, first of all, I... My my main tip, and it's, it's a tip for life, not only for hyper casual. It's it's a be patient, guys. 
hyper casual, it's a process, but it's a fun industry. It's, it's hard to get a hit, but you can really enjoy along the way. And every time that you get bad results, clean it off your shoulders and move on to the next game. I hope that now you're understanding the process a bit better. Um, and yeah, that's it. Awesome. Awesome. I think that's help. That is very helpful to uh, to all our uh, developers. Tamir, um, I want to thank you on behalf of everyone who was watching this video, and on and of course from my side. I think that is very, very, very insightful presentation and uh, the follow up prototype review. This is very valuable to teams to see how actually uh, this this is happening actually R before yeah. a game is being tested what a publisher is thinking uh, about when he or she looks at the game. So I think this is invaluable today. And um, um, as always, guys, Tamir is on the platform um, and he's looking for new games constantly. Uh, so submit your games and make sure you are doing a good job just describing your team and your game so that Tamir would reach out to you. The platform wor works. Uh, currently, uh, the way that publishers are reaching out to developers, not the other way around, uh, because that's, there's a very limited number of publishers and we don't want them to be spammed. Uh, but I can assure you that on our platform, publishers are really, really very active. So yeah, go ahead and uh, choose, choose, choose the right partner for you. And uh, Tamir has just shown how it looks like. Thank you for your time, Andy. Thank you all for uh, joining here, and, uh, and I hope it was uh, fun, uh, informative, and stay safe. Yeah, stay safe in this time. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everyone.